so if we're looking at low organic matter levels, um, lower carbons, drier climates, um, I mean, obviously, it's no secret we're big fans of humic. Yeah. Dry humix, liquid yes. humix. Um, what, I guess, from a 30,000 foot view, what is the dry, hum- what, what is dry humix going to do in those kinds of soils, the sands, the, the drier climates, the, what you just described? Yeah. What's it going to do in those soils for the plant and the nutrients we apply? Yeah. So, definitely on the dry side for 100%. Um, definitely in your low production zones. Okay. It's going to help, number one, help give a, um, place for those nutrients to tie to so when the biology consume it it's already in a plant available form okay. and that's the part i really enjoy about it when it comes to the dry humix you're to a sense mimicking that organic matter because the last i mean what humus is is the last step okay so you're pretty much taking organic matter and breaking it down even more i mean it's the last step before it starts um, we need to do a series on what is soil yeah soil construction yeah um so that's why i like the dry humic and it's more of a um broadcast or we're even try banding trying to replicate that in our 30 inch rows just to help bring the roi closer sure um but it's just a great opportunity for nutrients in that soil because that humic is going to have positive charges and negative charges a lot of nutrients can just bind into that It's, it's like a magnet so instead of phosphorus binding up to calcium or binding up to iron it can bind up to carbon Okay. Uh, same thing with potassium, mag, so on and so forth. Um, that's why I really like the dry. Mm-hmm. I know that's a very broad way, but it's um, it's just trying to mimic what organic matter does. Sure. And it, it's a way to accelerate the trans or the the movement of your soil towards the right direction. Sure. But then you transitioning. Can, yes. Yeah. Transitioning, yeah, transitioning yeah. into it. Yeah. We all know what high organic matter soils do. We all dream of those areas in yep. the field or yep. just those fields. It's just replicating that, that system. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Well, then also <laughs> one of the things that I want to look more into is utilizing humix to help bring your carbon to nitrogen ratio better on manure. Okay. Because you think of raw manure, I think it's like, there's a chance that it's like five to one. Ooh, so low carbon. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if it's composted and it's sit there, like I'm a huge proponent of compost and ruminant manure. Yeah, that's another hill I'd die on. Okay. Um, but if it's composted, usually the nitrogen gas is off per se, um, or the biology uses it up, puts it in an organic form. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that nit- carbon to nitrogen ratio can be around that 25 to 1. Okay. Okay, but that's very composted down. Yeah. What's nice about that too, though, is all your other nutrients that you're getting with that manure usually are in organic forms ready to be used. Because it's high carbon? It's higher carbon, so okay. it's tied up to that. Yeah. Um, and then just also the biology within the manure is consuming, pooping, consuming, pooping, just making it ready. That'll be a fun reel. Yeah. <laughs> <You can see me. laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So utilizing that humic to help definitely if you have like feedlots that are applying raw manure all the time, you know, one of the reasons it burns out, it yeah. literally burns out carbon. Sure. Period. Okay. So how do we make sure that we're putting in, putting manure on that ground that we have to get rid of. And I understand that logistics. Like if you got it, you got to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Like utilize more carbon. Okay. Utilize a humic. Um, or, you know, a lot of coffee grounds. <laughs> a lot of coffee grounds. <laughs> so here's one I did. I had uh, currently my operator. So I stripped, I, I split apply my nitrogen on corn strip till. And then I dry broadcast uh, AMS and urea over the top at V5, V6, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Um, and this one field did not get... I tried to time it right in front of a rain. Okay. And so we don't get a lot of gassing. Um, the gas will burn the leaves. And so we've... Ah, this one 80-acre field missed the rains, man. And I'm like, shoot. I was super dejected. And so I actually took, I ran a shuttle of liquid humic over to my plane buddy, and he flew on a gallon of liquid humic. 
Okay. And I added a couple. I looked like some micros. Just yeah. had some stuff laying around the shop. I'm like, I'm already running. I'll throw this in. Be good for the plants. Um, and he flew it on, and we didn't get any rain. And I went up there, and I looked, looked at it. About every 48 hours, I'd go by it. And I wasn't getting leaf burn. And we were having lots of humidity. Yep. So it would be humid in the mornings, and then it'd gas off. And we'd see singed edges on the leaves, but it was not happening on this field, and and so and I I consulted a couple people um, before doing this. I'm like, man, do you think a, an application of the carbon sprayed on will help keep that gas from vaping off? Basically, yep. now, do I have a scientific way to prove that it did that? No, I do not. But it did not burn like every other field does when we apply it and we don't get rain and it's a humid environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, I mean, it was my best corn. Okay? I'm not saying that did it at all. But did it help save that that some nit- losing of nitrogen? For, I firmly believe that it did. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have a, a you know, one, one friend of ours, sprayed uh he had the same mix urea and ams dry broadcasted on top of the field uh and he went in and was going to spot spray some rounda or some some johnson grass in the corn put uh fulvic in sprayed to the line where he sprayed there was no burn he was spraying for roundup yep or spraying for the for grass control but where there was fulvic in the tank there was no burn to the line other side of the drive it had burned the edges of the leaves. Anyway. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat- podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content 